Right, I just want to make sure that we are back on. And uh, so I want to continue with the scripture. So I want to just say this. If you're watching these teachings right now on Facebook, and it's going to be on YouTube later today, that you can share it with family to get the truth. Do not please post there on Facebook. Yeah, but you didn't go to 1 Thessalonians 4. It says we'll be caught up and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get to that and I will give you the truth. And you're going to be shocked to understand what that really means to be caught up. And I will explain that to you so that you can understand where it comes from. Because even Jesus was caught up. So we're going to get into that. So don't write anything on Facebook right now. Wait until you've done the whole teaching. And then you can say, thank you, Nomsa, for the revelation. Right. Who will remain on the earth? Luke 17, 34. Okay, we've done that just now. We've touched on that for the women that is uh, at the uh, grinding mill. And uh, the men that are in the field, the two men, and they asked him, where, Lord, where will that man be taken? The one that's taken out of the bed with the other man that's in the bed. Where will he be taken? He said, wherever the dead body is, there will be vultures and eagles by gathered together. That's where we left the first part. And I'm going to continue with the second part now. So one is left on the earth and one is taken. The disciples ask, where are you going? Where are they taking them? The ones that are taken. And Jesus says, where the dead body is. I don't have to even explain that to you. If you're a child of God, you very clearly understand what I'm saying to you now. You understand that vultures are scavengers. They were going to go there where vultures and evers scavenge on bodies. That's where they will be taken, especially the two men. The one will be taken, one will be left. All right, so now... Let's go to, I want to just think, I'm thinking quickly about, you know, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. And then God says, well, if you're a child of God, you are righteous, correct? You are living in the kingdom of God. You study the word, you share with people, you witness unto Jesus, you do all the right things. And then you live with the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Am I correct? The fruit of the Holy Spirit is gifts that God has given us as children of God. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, discipline, self-control, friendliness. All the fruit of the Holy Ghost is what God has given us as children of God. And then you get to the book of Matthew, the Beatitudes on the mountain. And God says this, write this down, Matthew. Blessed are the meek. Now, meekness is a fruit of the Holy Ghost. So, blessed are the meek ones who have been receiving this meekness gift from God, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I just want that to sink in a little bit. It's going to be very hard for you to receive this gift from God, to inherit the earth that he has given to you as an inheritance, because the meek will receive the inheritance of the earth. It's going to be very hard for you to receive that if you've gone somewhere. All right? Let's just stop there for a moment. So Jesus told them that one will be left for to work for him in the kingdom of God. Where? Yeah, on the earth. Because you're going to continue. You're going to be here. You know, you're going to, you're going to talk with Jesus. You're going to uh, talk about, about Jesus. You're going to witness. You're going to share the gospel of the kingdom. All right? And uh, a person will be over all the possessions of the kingdom and while one will be taken away where the dead body is, where the vultures uh, go together. And, and here, so these events of one taken and one left is not a futuristic account. It's not something that's going to happen. <sighs> My goodness, everybody's waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. So these things will happen as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be. With the coming of the Son of Man. You're going to see them in the field. You're going to see them in the grinding mill. You're going to see them here and there. And he talks about that. Things that are happening. Um, it's, it's very hard for me to explain what I'm giving to you now. But just keep with me. Okay. So if we are talking this in Luke 34 to 37. If we are talking about these scriptures as a futuristic event. When Jesus returns then we can't be put over the possessions of Jesus and still work in the kingdom of God for him 
because we will be gone. We will be with Jesus. We will be living and ruling and reigning with him here on the earth. And I'll get to that later. Please understand what I'm saying. So there's two accounts here. He's talking here in Luke about when Jesus came already on the earth. He was born as a baby, for unto us a son is born, a child is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. This is the name of Jesus, Shiloh, the one who will rule with a rod and with a, a scepter, righteousness and justice. He will come. And everybody was expecting the Messiah to come. And then he came. He was born. So Luke writes and he says, Some of the people believe the report. They will keep on working for Jesus in the field. They will keep on milling at the grind mill, making bread, spreading the word of God. They will continue because Jesus will put them over all his possessions like he did for his disciples. Go into the world. Preach the gospel, heal the sick, tell everybody about Jesus. This event here is not futuristic for when he will return. Because you cannot go with Jesus and we're going to get to where, who is going and who's staying and where we're going to go. But you cannot, when Jesus returns, be placed in an authority position and still go and preach the gospel. That must be done here on the earth now. So this account in Luke has already happened it's finished it's already there somebody expected that he was going to come and they received the report of the messiah and they believed in him the disciples and other people and they went to go and spread the gospel they are working in the field they are grinding at the mill they're baking bread the word of god they are spreading it they are already doing it that has already happened finished this is not a futuristic account for when Jesus comes back again. And yes, he is coming back. All right. So just listen. So it already happened when Jesus was born in a stable in Jerusalem and he came to his own people and they did not recognize him as a Messiah. Some did. So they will continue working in the field and at the grinding mill. The disciples and other people, people like me who's spreading the gospel and spreading the truth. And then he says, the one who is taken are those who did not receive Jesus as the Messiah. And they did not expect the Messiah at that time. He came unto his own. Now, the word of God says in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 11, he came unto his own. So he came already. He came the first time when he was born. This is the first time when Jesus was born. John 1, 11. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. So they did not receive the report that Isaiah, Daniel, Micah, the disciples, they didn't believe the people of the Old Testament that said, the Messiah is coming. They didn't believe that report. And so they will be taken away and not get into the kingdom of God when Jesus came, when he was born as a baby, right? Now, those that did believe, they are living and working in the kingdom of God. They are still working in the field, the kingdom of God, spreading the good news. They are still grinding at the mill, baking bread, giving the word of God. They are still working that because God put them over all his possessions of the earth. The children of God can have everything that Jesus had. We are co heirs with Jesus Christ. So there were two times that he came. One when he was born and two will be when he does return. And he's not come yet. He is still coming back. But just to clarify what this part means about the field and the bed and the grind belt, that has already happened. That's not something that's going to happen when he returns at the second time because you cannot be placed in a position of authority and Jesus says, here's my position, I put you over it. Well done, faithful servant. Now go into the field, spread the gospel, heal the sick, deliver those ones, set at liberty those that are bound, let the blind see, let the deaf hear, let the lame walk, do all these things. These are the things I'm giving you to do. 
until I come back a second time. So please understand that scripture. Right. John 1.11. He came to that which belonged to him, to his own. His domain. His creation. Excuse me. <coughs> he came to his own things of the world. And they who were his own did not receive him. That's what they were taken out of the kingdom of God. And they are the ones living here today on this earth, eating, drinking, getting drunk, marrying, given into marriage. And if Jesus comes tomorrow and they're not ready, they will be swept away, says Matthew 24, as it was in the days of Noah. But the other people, those that were ready, that were working in the field, and working at the grind mall and working, Jesus came to them and said, they received him. He said, I give you my possessions. Now go. You are above. Go and work for me and tell the gospel of Jesus. And they are sober. They've got the breastplate of righteousness, living in faith and love and they have salvation in peace and joy of the Holy Ghost, moral power. And they are living with an excellence of soul where in the kingdom of God. I gave you the scripture in Romans earlier in the first part. So go and watch that if you've not watched that. If you have just joined us. I just need to take some water. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. But to as many as did receive and welcome him. He gave the authority, listen, the power, the privileges, the right to become children of God and to keep working in the kingdom of God. When he was crucified, he left. So he told us to keep working in the field, keep milling at the grind mall. So that those who believe, adhere to and trust in and rely on his name, will be living in the kingdom of God. So Jesus keeps telling them these parable stories and all the gospels you can go and there's all these stories that he's telling his disciples and sometimes they understood it and sometimes they didn't and sometimes they said, what does that mean? But he told this story, he said uh, about the bridegroom and the wedding and the bride and the marriage and the lamb. Now all of those things, let me tell you today, has happened already if you have said yes to Jesus, you are a child of God. You are the bride of Christ. A bride is somebody that is already married. The marriage feast is over. Your feast is living in righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost, which is salvation, healing, deliverance, no poverty, no lack of nothing. I shall lack no good thing, Psalm 23. Living in the kingdom of God as a bride of Jesus Christ already. You're not his fiance. You are his bride. The bride, the, the wedding happened the moment you said yes. And something happened within you, in your physical body inside, which I will do one of these days and explain to you exactly what happened in your kingdom, the kingdom of God is inside of you and around you, like I said to you in the first video. The kingdom of God, inside of you, something happened in your physical body when you said yes to Jesus. When you said with your whole heart, with your mind, with your soul, with your understanding, and with your physical body. Because there's a three-part salvation. You say yes with your heart, but your mind has to be converted to live this kind of life so that your mind does not live this kind of life. And then there's a final salvation of your body that comes in line with God's word. Things happen in your physical body with your cells, with your blood, with your vessels, with your organs. Man, it's amazing stuff. But I'm going to get to that. So keep watching. All right, so. Uh, let's talk about that. He is the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom that came already. When you said yes to him, you became his bride. Okay. The wedding is gone. The marriage is over. The lamb has already been slain. It's done. It's finished. Okay. 
Because you believe in him, you are now married to the bridegroom. This is also not something that must still happen. People are waiting for a feast somewhere, somewhere. We're going to feast with Jesus. No, 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 no. This is what it means. This is your feast. This you received when you said yes to Jesus Christ. You became his bride. That's the marriage feast. All these things that you've received. It's not physical food. It's not a physical feast because the wicked are eating and drinking and doing things. But the righteous children of God are not eating, not drinking, not fornicating, not doing things. We are living in this way, in righteousness of God. Understand the difference between the two. So John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus Christ. And he said, the friend of the bridegroom is happy because he sees the bridegroom is now here. He already came. He's already happened, right? He said, the bridegroom is Jesus and we are the bride. So we are married to Jesus Christ, okay? So John three twenty nine. he who has the bride is the bridegroom. So where was the bridegroom? On the earth, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus walked there, he was the bridegroom. He came from that time till now before he will come back. Everyone that says yes to Jesus becomes the bride of Jesus Christ. So you are already married with Jesus. You are his bride. But the groomsman, this is John the Baptist, who stands by and listens to him rejoices greatly and heartily on account of the bridegroom's voice. Then this is my pleasure and joy. What is his pleasure? And joy of the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist was living in the kingdom of God. He accepted Jesus as his bridegroom. He became a bride of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm happy. I rejoice. It's my pleasure and my joy for it's now complete. His marriage to Jesus Christ was complete. Your marriage to Jesus Christ as a son of God or as a child of God is complete. I am married to Jesus Christ. He is my bridegroom. I am his bride. I'm his wife now. I'm the wife of Jesus. The marriage is over. I have received everything because I'm living in the day and not in the night. Right? So now let's go. To the scripture, well, before we go there, let me just say this also. John 3.30 says, he must increase and I must decrease. That this is what happens. When Jesus in us increases in our kingdom, we are living with Christ. When he increases, we decrease. We disappear. And Jesus come forth. And people see Jesus in you. Like people, when they come into my church after I've preached and I was just in the spirit all the time, they say, oh, your eyes are, your eyes are twinkling and shining like there's a light. And oh, look at your eyes, look at your eyes. That is living in the kingdom of God. When we decrease and he increases, he becomes more. He comes to the forward in this vessel of ours, whether it's male or female, um, Romans 3, 28, there is no more male, no more female, no more slave, no more uh, free, no more Greek, no more Jew. We are all one in Christ. When he comes forth in you and he's revealed, Brother Paul says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. So now that he lives within you, in the kingdom of God, within you and around you, now this is where you're living, in the kingdom of God. All right. So there were people in Jerusalem who expected Jesus to come. This is why those events in Luke have already happened. All right. He came, John the Baptist, to prepare a way for the Messiah. Oh, man, I did a very, very interesting um, teaching just in the last 10 days while I'm busy with the book of Isaiah about the highway. Prepare you the week, the highway for the Lord that John the Baptist shouted in the desert. So I'm going to keep on doing these teachings by grace of God if I have time. Or you can hear it on a Sunday morning. I'll be preaching it to my church at a Sunday morning 
at nine o'clock here in Mayerton, and you're welcome to come and listen, very welcome. These are the kind of teachings we do at our church. They are deep teachings. It's not David and Goliath. It's not Daniel and Eliukel. It's not David Slan for Julia do it. It's deep teaching. So if that is the food that you want, you want to come and eat meat and not drink milk of the word of God anymore, then you are welcome to join us. And we are in Mayerton on the old Plascom Base Road, number 46 Donald Road. TRT Church. All right, so... Let's just uh, carry on with this. So John the Baptist said, prepare the way for the Lord. Repent. The kingdom of God is upon you. Jesus preached the same thing. Jesus and John the Baptist both preached. Repent. The kingdom of God has come upon you. Repent. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Repent. The kingdom of God is around you. This is what I've been explaining to you. The kingdom of God within you and around you. It came when Jesus was born on the earth. It was already there. But he did go to heaven before that to go and establish the kingdom. I'm not going to give that revelation now. I just got it a week ago. So I will do that in the next week or two and give you that revelation. But man, what a word of God. Mwah! I love your word, Jesus. All right. So the coming of the Lord. Let's talk about 1 Thessalonians 4, about the caught up. Thing that everybody wants to throw out there and say that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, it's not. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 Now also we would not have you ignorant. Don't be ignorant about the word of God. Please be open and sober. I read that for you. Be sober. That's number one. Be sober, be diligent. Listen and hear the true word of God. Don't be ignorant, all right, about the truth, about those who fall asleep in death, that you may not grieve for them, as the rest do, who have no hope beyond the grave. Don't be ignorant. Verse 34, some of you are disgracefully ignorant. <laughs> I love the way Brother Paul writes here. Some people are disgracefully ignorant about what's going to happen when Jesus will come back. But I'm going to tell you now what will happen because it's in the word of God. It says here, for since we believe, since we were married to Christ, since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring also with him through Jesus. Who's going to come? Jesus or God? They are the same, three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Listen very carefully, verse 14. Even so, God, the Father, will also bring with him, through Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in death. Just let it sink in a little bit. Verse 15. For this we declare to you, by the Lord's own word. This is what God is writing here. God is not a man that he should lie. Listen. That we who are alive and remain on the earth. We who are alive and remain on the earth when Jesus will come. When God will come. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed, go before, into his presence until something else has happened first. When he comes, we're not just going to come and meet him. Something else first has to happen. So stop the lorry, stop the bus and listen first. Something else must happen first. He says here, before the coming of the Lord, we shall in no way proceed into his presence, will not go with him, or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in Christ, in death. Death is a place of sleep. Verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Listen very carefully, please. It's there in your Bible, Amplified. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Okay, where's heaven? 
Let's stop there. Kingdom of God is around you. Heaven is around you. Heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. Heaven is here around us. God said in the beginning, let there be light, let there be darkness, let there be this, let there be that. He created things, but he created a firmament. He created us and he divided the waters on the earth, separated them from the waters above the firmament. Man, oh man. And so there's a lot of stories at the moment going about that. Is it a flat earth or is it a round earth and a globe and blah, blah, blah. I'll get to that. I've got proof from the Bible. Do we have a round earth or a flat earth? And the scriptures are in the Bible. And I'll get to that in the next few weeks by grace of God. But let's get back to our teaching. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry. So a few things are going to happen when he comes back. There's going to be a loud cry. It will be God in Christ that will come. God himself, he says here, yeah, excuse me, descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons. So there will be a summons. He will summon. Who's he going to summon? The righteous children, those are the people he's going to summon. With a shout of an archangel, so there's going to be a shout, another shout of the archangel. Okay, everybody with me? And with a blast of a trumpet, so there's another thing that's going to happen. So there will be a blast of a trumpet man i want to do the teaching on the trumpets it's so interesting and those listen very carefully who have departed this life from this earth in christ will rise first they are first going to rise then we the living ones who remain on the earth when he's coming where do you want to fly to this word says the living ones in Christ that are living in the day who remain on the earth when he comes, listen very quickly, shall simultaneously be caught up, wait, 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 will be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, this is this word here, air, from the Greek word, meaning atmosphere surrounding you. It also means the breath of God. The ruach, breath of God, surrounding you, kingdom of God within you, the breath of God within you, surrounding you, the heavenlies around you, in the air, surrounding you. And so always through eternity, we shall be with the Lord. So therefore comfort and encourage one another with these words. So what is he saying? This is what he's saying. He said, God himself will descend. He will come. He will come with the cloud. You want to know what the cloud is? That is the cloud of witnesses of Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 says in verse 1, Therefore then, since we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, these are the people that have fallen asleep in death when they were on the earth, like my husband who died, your auntie, your uncle, your mother, your brother, your children, everybody who has died, who have fallen asleep in Christ, they are in a cloud of witnesses. Oh my God, Psalm 104 verse 3 says, He makes the clouds His chariots. <laughs> and He walks on the wings of the wind. So Jesus is floating around on the cloud, which are the witnesses that have died beforehand. And they were the ones who came to fetch Him after His death when he was resurrected, when he was speaking to his disciples, oh my God, I'm running my own teaching beforehand. Okay, 
But let me just go there and bless you. And then I'm going to stop the game. So they were the cloud of witnesses. So the Bible says when Jesus was talking to his disciples and they saw him depart. The Bible doesn't say he went up into heaven. Don't read it. It doesn't say that. He said he was standing there on the earth talking to his disciples. And the cloud came and received him. The cloud came over him. The cloud came and received him. These are the people who have died before. They came to fetch their Messiah who died and was resurrected. The cloud received him and then he went away. And so the cloud of witnesses are those people who have died before him that are in the cloud of witnesses today. Hello, Mahabi. How are you? And so when God comes back with a loud cry, God in Christ will come. God himself in Christ with the Holy Ghost, three in one, will return to fetch the bride. Jesus will present the bride to the Father with a summon. This is my bride. He's going to call and summon all his children from those who are alive and remain on the earth. And with a shout... And with an archangel's shout, and with a blast of the trumpet, he will summon his church. And so the cloud will take us, and we will meet him in the surrounding air of the kingdom of God. And we will be simultaneously at the same time as we say, oh! There's my mother. Oh, there's my father. Oh, there's my son. Oh, there's my this, there's my that. I cut that off in Jesus' name. My son will still have a long life by the grace of God. Whatever you see in the cloud, you will see with your own eyes the destruction of the wicked on the earth with a fire that God will send. Psalm 91 verse 8. But at the same time, simultaneously, you're not going to meet him first when he comes. Said first, this will happen. Those that have died and have fallen asleep will rise first. So here they are in the cloud. Their soul and their ghost is in the cloud with Jesus because God is a spirit and they are now spirits. Those that have fallen asleep, they are spirits. Now they are waiting. They are coming with God with all these things. And we are alive and remain on the earth because the wicked are now falling away and going into Gehenna, the lake of fire, the third level of hell. And we see it with our own eyes. But we don't want to look at them. We want to see this coming. We've been waiting for that. And he says, so their bodies will be risen and our bodies will be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the moment they receive their new bodies that they will be they will be standing up they will arise and when he comes with a cloud at the same time simultaneously when we receive our new physical bodies our new spiritual bodies at the same time they receive their bodies and simultaneously we will be with christ and after that thing has happened where the wicked has been swept off the earth as it was in the days of Noah, that time by a flood, this time by the fire of God because he's a consuming fire, because they were wicked, they lived this life, they didn't want to listen to him. So now it's over and gone, it's finished for them, there's no turning back. There he is, here we are, alive and remain on the earth. We did not fly away somewhere. Let me ask you this. Here we see him coming. Jesus asked his disciples, teach us how to pray. He says, pray like this. In Matthew 6, verse 9. He says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come in us. Thy will be done on earth as it is. In heaven so if you want to fly away somewhere here comes God with a loud cry with God in Christ with the summons with a shout of the archangel and a blast of the trumpet here he comes to fetch those that are living in the kingdom of God and you want to fly away somewhere to another planet I think you're gonna miss each other in the air somewhere where do you want to fly to 
Let your kingdom come on earth. This is your inheritance. You're not going anywhere. God gave you. Psalm 16 says, the lions have fallen for me in beautiful places. This is your inheritance. You're not going to fly away to another planet on glory land. You know, I've told this to my church before. Like the Israelites were in Babylon, in exile. There was not much for them to do and they sang songs. And Psalm 139 says they sang by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down. You know the story, they made a Christmas song about it. By the rivers of Babylon. Okay, I'm not a singer, I'm a teacher, so don't laugh at me. By the rivers of Babylon. So they could sing to make them feel better because they were in exile, in bondage. The same way after the Second World War, there were Jews that were in concentration camps uh, by Germans and all, all the people that took them into exile. And there were many, many Jews that were killed and all. And some of those that were in those concentration camps couldn't do much. They did exactly what the Israelites did. They sang songs to make them feel better. And they started saying, one day when we get out of this place, we will fly away to glory land. And they made songs about that. And they took that and they say, that's a religion, that's Christianity. People, that's not what the scripture says. We are not going to God. God is coming to us. He's coming to meet us. Yeah. Who are alive and remain on the earth. He will come to us in a cloud with the witnesses. So that you go, oh, there's, there's daddy and there's, oh, and then in simultaneously in the twinkling of an eye, they will be changed because their bodies will rise and cover them. And we will be changed in a celestial body and simultaneously we will be united and be with Christ forever, as it says there. And then the scripture says we will reign and rule with Christ. Where? On the earth, people. Not somewhere on a planet somewhere. That's all I'm going to say to you right now. And, you know, if you want to talk about the caught up life or caught up life, let me just bless you before I go. Caught up is not rapture. The word rapture only appears twice in the Bible. The word rapture means individual, spiritual, enlightenment experience. That's what it means. This is what I'm talking about. People of the day, be sober, be vigilant, live in the day. Enlightened. I was enlightened into the kingdom of God. I saw visions. I saw things. I saw many things. I've seen flowers that doesn't even exist on this earth. Listen, John on the island of Pot Potmos in chapter 4, Jesus talks to him. He had the vision of Jesus in chapter 1. And then he talks about the churches in chapter 2 and 3. And then chapter 4, he says, oh my goodness. Jesus says to him, come up hither. Come up high. Come up here. And he caught him up. Where was John standing? Still on the earth, on the island of Patmos, which is a volcanic island. He was still standing there, but he went up there, caught up in Christ to see visions that he had to write down and come and give to us. This is the caught up life. All right, listen to this one. Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 says, I know a man in the body or out of the body, I do not know. In the spirit or out of the spirit, I do not know. I was caught up in caught up into the third heaven. But where was he standing? Still on the earth. He was still standing down here, but he was caught up in heaven. That is being caught up. It does not mean you're going to fly to another planet. Caught up means being elevated. This is caught up life. Moral power and excellence of soul. You have reached spiritual maturity in the kingdom of God. That's what it means. Let me give you another one. All right, Moses in Exodus 3 came into the desert. He saw this amazing thing of this tree that was burning. There was fire and there was a voice talking to him saying, Moses, Moses. I like how they do that in the movies. Moses. Like it's like, you know, something. Okay, Moses. <laughs> I love that. But anyway, so he saw this phenomenon and he looked at it. You know, right there, he was raptured in kingdom life. He experienced the bodily Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Father was the voice calling him. 
He called him Moses, Moses. The tree is the tree of life. That's Jesus Christ. The fire that didn't consume because the Holy Ghost cannot consume Jesus. The Holy Ghost is the fire. He had an experience with the bodily God in the desert. He was caught up into another dimension, but he was still standing in the desert on the sand. Come on, people. Being caught up is not flying to another planet. Get it for once. Jesus in John 29, oh my goodness, there was the uh, mountain, he went up and he took James and Peter and John with him, and then, uh, the, you know, he changed, his whole apparel changed, his clothing was glistening and his face was shining and it was just, it was another experience and these three were so frightened and they saw all this happening and a cloud, the witnesses of Hebrews 12 came again and overshadowed them all and then Moses and Elijah who's in the cloud of witnesses just climbed out of the cloud and stood there on the mountain with Jesus and these three disciples saw Moses and Elijah Moses who got the law and Elijah the prophet these things have passed no more law no more prophet in the Old Testament because Jesus is now here. Now it's grace and mercy. This is my son. Listen to him. And the disciples did not understand what was happening. And they were saying, let us build for you three booths. He really, really, really did not know what he was saying. Because if you know the revelation of the three booths, man, I don't have time to go into it. Okay, so he says, that, and he changed. His whole face was shining. The same thing happened with Moses when he went up Mount Moriah to go and speak to God. When he came back, his face shone so brightly. He was caught up into heaven, but he was still standing here on the earth on the mountain. Come on, somebody. He was still here. He did not fly to another planet. He came down that mountain. His face was shining so much. He had to put a veil over his face because he brought the law. And he had to cover his face with a veil. Oh, another revelation. If you're there in spirit, you will catch it right now. I don't have time for it. The law and the veil. And he covered his face because it was Old Testament. So now we are in the New Testament grace. All right. So taken up, caught up. Jesus was also caught up when he went into the cross. He was dying on the cross for you and me. He died so that he could come back and fetch you and bring with him the cloud of witnesses. And the same way the angel said to Mary when she came to a, a grave and they came to come and anoint him with oil. And he said, woman, why are you standing here as if looking for somebody? He is not here. He has risen as he said he would be. He was caught uh, he, he was um, taken up, going back to the Father, going to sit in, in the kingdom of God, on the right hand side of God the Father, which is where he is. And he's in kingdom. And where's kingdom? Within you. Please, if you don't get the revelation, I can't give it to you in a more simpler way than what I've done today. This is the so-called rapture. There is no rapture you're not going to fly to another planet god is going to come to you in christ he's going to bring to you the people that have died don't be ignorant don't be disgracefully ignorant that's why he starts like that in 1 corinthians 15 verse 34 don't be disgracefully ignorant about those who have fallen asleep beforehand because before he must take you with him before he can accept you in your body. Before he can do that, he must come with a cloud of witnesses. And then those that have died in Christ must rise first. They must rise and be united with their body and their spirit and their soul. And once that has happened, while we are standing here seeing all these amazing things, how they are clothed, then we will receive our bodies, our spiritual enlightenment bodies, our raptured bodies. And we will simultaneously be, be with Christ in the air and we will come and reign and rule. We will just be high enough with Jesus to let the earth burn and see the wickedness that are being slain by the fire, the consuming fire of God. We will see with our own eyes, Psalm 91 verse 8, and we are waiting while all this has happened. We see that. And as the earth 
Let me just do this on the earth. That's the only way I can explain it. As the earth is burning, all right, here comes the fire of God burning the earth and the wicked are being cast into the lake of fire, the third level of hell, okay, and another teaching for another day. As the fire is going on this side, he creates new heavens, new earth, new earth. And while we are waiting here in the atmosphere surrounding us in the breath of God in Christ, waiting with the cloud of witnesses, we see that happening. And as he's creating new earth and heaven, and that is being scorched down and happening, let's just do that. We will come with him and reign and rule with Christ where? Nowhere else but this earth. This is the truth about the rapture. I'm sick and tired of people telling me I'm going to be raptured somewhere into a cloud. And now you want to come and talk to me about the mansions of heaven? Next video. There is no mansions. There is no streets of gold. It's one street. Not plural. It's like one street. How do you think all the children of God is going to walk on one street? It's a highway that is being prepared in the book of Isaiah already for children of God whom Jesus must live within. The highways, I will talk about the highways later and just clarify the street of gold and the pearly gates. Already in Isaiah, he says, you will, you will be closed with a gates and stones, precious stones and rubies and diamonds and poles. That's you. That's not a physical city somewhere. You are the city of God. You are the city of Zion. But that's for another video. I'm getting hungry to just teach today. So I'm hoping that next time you're going to listen. I'm going to put this on YouTube. If you want to find it and listen again, you can find it at TRT Church on YouTube. Please like. Please do that for me. That would really help my channel. And may God bless you until next time. I love you all. This is the word of God about the rapture. Shalom.